All right, take eight. Try it again. Uh, we got the motorizer here, and in the side of the box, you got your positive, negative, and your A, B, C, plus your sensor and USB port. Um, to do your firmware updates, you can take like a paper clip and bend it straight, hold the button down, and plug the cord in. When you do that properly, the screen here will flash, and that's when you know that uh, you're connected, and you can begin your firmware updates. For a power source, I'm going to use a uh, two-cell pack. Of course, just good old positive-negative. And it's on. Um, you can check your sensors to make sure that those work. Um, you can check your power supply voltage. You can also toggle down here to the system temperature which is the motorizer temperature I don't believe it checks the motor temperature yep system temperature so right here it's a little toasty in the garage at 78 Fahrenheit 60 or 26 Celsius uh, PC connect I think is something that they're working on for some future uh, items and then system info is just the version and uh, and the actual number of the unit Okay, now we're on the start motor. So I'll try and keep my head down and not mess this one up. Uh, I'm going to plug in the sensor. And A, B, and C. Start it up. Push this right button here. Now you can either swipe it like an old uh, iPod or push this right button and it'll start it at 50%. Fires it up. And you can see it gives you the power supply voltage, your RPM. Current speed is 50%. You can swipe it up, turn it all the way up to 100%, or back down. So just for the sake of making it easy, we're just going to go 100%. Um, you can see your RPM, your KV, your timing, and your current draw. Now in my previous takes I was trying to show that um, some of the cool things you can do with this is play with the sensor position um, by shimming the magnet closer or further away and how it would affect some of these numbers, but I'll let you guys play with that on your own time. Um, next menu down, um, here you got your A, B, and C's. Uh, sensors. Um, they do float around a little bit, but as you can see, on average it's about uh, four, four and a half degree difference. Um, this is about average. Um, I have seen one when they first showed me a motorizer at Snowbirds that I believe was eight degrees out, um, but most of them are already around three, four degrees. Down the next menu gives a current draw per, per phase, per pole. And again, there's a little bit of float, but not too much. So on this main screen here is your average numbers. Now the cool part about this is I was able to take this motor right here that I've run in my World GT car a bunch and all these races and then grab a completely different motor plug it in and fire it up and we look at the timing and we're right at that 41, 42 degrees RPM, current draw is all about the same you can see here that uh, on the other motor that the uh, phase A was actually the higher timing where B on this one is a little bit higher. So you may be able to mix and match sensor boards with stators um, to find the best combination that may actually produce a better running motor. Um, this is one of the cool things about the motorizer. 
Um, the other thing that uh, that I was going to show was I had just used some pieces of Lexan to make some uh, some basically uh, little feeler gauges to feel in between the uh, magnet and the sensors, so you can play with different um, shimming gaps. And for example, on this uh, spec motor. Um, 0.5 actually produced a little bit lower current draw and a little bit higher RPM than 0.85. So some of the things like that you can play with and actually see a difference um, with the motorizer um, that you wouldn't normally see. The other thing that it did was it actually cleaned up some of that um, timing float. Um, the other thing I'll show you real quick is you got two motors but you can see one is maybe around 16 degrees on the end bell, and the other one is right around 20, maybe just a tick over. So it definitely takes up any tolerance in, you know, build variation or, you know, just just any small differences in the production of these motors. So, you know, you can get all your motors exactly set up, and there'll be no questions about why one's running better than another so it's definitely a very very nice tool to be able to test with and I'm sure once we get more time with it we'll be able to learn a lot more um, specific details and combinations of how to make uh, make motors run a lot better so um, if anybody has any other questions feel f feel free to email me at joshcyril at gmail.com or you can uh, just catch me on Facebook thanks have a good one and see you at a racetrack soon. Bye.